Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Vitaly Dubinin. I have so much privilege, so much honor to welcome today Mr. Uh, da Vinci J15, the man, the legend himself. Welcome, Da Vinci. And the most important question, of course, is how do you feel today? <laughs> I'm in the pipe, five by five, staying alive here in Dubai. How are you doing? I'm amazing. And now I've been in crypto for five and a half years. And uh, for me, it's mind boggling. So many things are happening, you know, DeFi, NFTs, Web 3.0. I mean, it's crazy. It's so hard to keep up with everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is the major financial space that that's, uh, that everybody should be focusing on because um, that's where the growth is, because this is a new technology that no one thought was possible until Bitcoin was invented. So guys, in case that you don't know, Da Vinci has been a long time in crypto, in Bitcoin, before even altcoins were out there. <laughs> and, and he's very well known for actually recording a video and sharing with everybody, hey, buy some Bitcoin. It's cheap right now. It's below a dollar. What are you doing with your life? You know, go and buy your lottery ticket or buy a Bitcoin and turn out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I remember that. I, 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 that video, that famous one, that, the, the one that uh, got the most views, yeah. that was in 2013. But I actually started doing videos back in March of 2011 about Bitcoin. And uh, those ones didn't uh, get popular. But I mean, I even did one video saying, listen, I'm so sure about this that I'll guarantee your money. I'll guarantee you up to $1,000, right? That if you just buy 1,000 Bitcoin, right, <laughs> you'll, be, uh, you'll be rich one day. Can you imagine if you bought 1,000 Bitcoin back then? I wish I subscribed to your YouTube channel back then. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, I, yeah, just Facebook. Uh, I, I was not even on Facebook at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's how old mm -hmm. it was so uh, i want to kind of start this and uh, share with us a little bit about uh, the story behind the name why da vinci j15 what what 15 represent to you well um i was looking for I, I just wanted a username that no one else would use because mm. <laughs> i wasn't planning to be you know famous or anything like that or or popular on youtube but it was just wanted to uh to do YouTube videos to talk about gold and silver and how you know the whole system is a fraud and I know that nobody's going to listen to me, so I thought, okay, well, you know, just a name, username, right? And I could use it everywhere. So that's I was using that username everywhere to, to whenever I open up an account somewhere, I'd use that username. So now because I use that username everywhere, everybody knows exactly where to look to find me right? wherever it is, whether it's Reddit or whether it's um, you know. Instagram, Twitter, right? Um, even uh, Telegram, right? Because I was registered well before I was famous. So what, what was that first spark that uh, kind of moved in the direction to explore Bitcoin? How Bitcoin came into your ra radar in the first place? Uh, well, Bitcoin came into my radar well, back um, in 20, March of 2011 when one of my, um, well, it was actually February 2011, when one of my user, my viewers said, what do you think about Bitcoin? I'm like, Bitcoin, what's that? And I went to the website and I was like, the, 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 this is a decentralized cash system. Like impossible, right? <laughs> you can't solve the, the, the double spend problem. That's uh, been a uh, computer science problem for, for decades. Right. And so it's not possible. And then I wrote him back quickly. I said, okay, listen, man, this is a scam, right? I know as a software developer, this is not possible, but I'm going to read through the source code and show you how it's a scam. And I'm going to do a video about it. Wow. And so once, once I went through the source code and went through, first I went through the white paper and then, then I was like, maybe this might work. And I went through the source code. And I was like, damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> this is going to work. They did solve it. Yes. <laughs> and then I did a video, which I don't know where it is, right? I can't believe it. My next video was like, every once in a while, something comes along that makes Poor, poor people rich because they could bought it very very cheap this is one of them wow so you were you actually could read that code uh yes okay. i'm a software developer i could read c plus plus c um pascal and many languages right um like uh, you know python and so forth but so, so that was what you were doing before like a uh, programming doing 
Cool. Yes, I was working at Loris Technologies uh, at the time. It was a company that I built their software from ground up from scratch. It's called Find the software is called File Nexus, and uh, I was the head lead developer there um, for quite some time, for about seventeen years before I left the company. Mm. Wow! So uh, you you became uh, you left the company a long time ago already. Because... Yes, exactly. About two thousand thirteen is when I left. That's where you started focusing on crypto, one hundred percent. Two thousand thirteen. Yes and no. I mean, I, I start. I was I was mining up until the end of two thousand thirteen. Um, then I gave up on the mining um, because um, I realized that I, 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 no, I, I wanted more Bitcoin, and I was spending Bitcoin to to for mining equipment. And what I realized was, by the time I got the mining equipment and started mining. I was not going to be able to recover the Bitcoin that I already spent. When, so it would have made sense to just hold the Bitcoin. Exactly. So oh, yeah. that's what I learned about mining. <laughs> yeah, mining has become much, much bigger right now. Uh, things if you are the, the person definitely to, to see and witness how this whole space has transformed and changed completely in the, in the last uh, decade. <laughs> Uh, yes, it has. It went from Bitcoin being like, you know, just something you use on the dark web to, to, to buy drugs to, you know, um, and, 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 and the only other item I remember back in 2011 was, oh, you could buy socks, you could buy alpaca socks, right? Mm -hmm. A few, there was a few places that, you know, had, and I remember if you'd be able to, you know, there was faucets, right, where you can get free Bitcoin, where you can just, yeah. you know, put in your address and they'll send you some free Bitcoin. It was amazing. I bought my first Bitcoin at uh, one thousand a hundred dollars back in April two thousand eleven, which was not not a bad time <laughs> to get. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah, it. that's not bad. Yeah, uh, and and since then I got like watched every YouTube video. I'm like, this is the what gives freedom to the people. This is the future. So I started dedicated everything all my life into educating people about crypto. Uh, and continue to do so every single day. So I, I want to ask you uh, about, um, you know, you, you've been you've been uh, in bear markets for like three four times already, right? You've been yes, yes, yes. Bear market. I watched Bitcoin go from one dollar right when I first bought it. Or actually, I bought it at sixty seven cents, and then I watched it go all the way up to thirty two dollars. And I even bought the top a whole bunch at the top. And watch it come all the way back, crashing back down, $2. losing 98% of the value, right, uh, to $2. And I bought then too. <laughs> so I had, I, I kept the faith the whole way down, right? And it doesn't matter because I knew it, this thing cannot be stopped. This cannot be uninvented. It's not going anywhere. Even during 2018 uh, bear market, you were not really panic selling. <laughs> nope, no, not at all. I was, um, I, I've seen this all before many, many times. I watched it go again up to from, from $2 all the way up to $266, down to $50, back up to, yeah. to $1,300, back down to $166, and back up to $20,000, and back down to $3,000. So I've, I've been around the block. <laughs> what could you say to people that are freaking out sometimes watching Bitcoin minus 20% and uh, they're newcomers, they're just, you know, they said, oh, you should buy some Bitcoin, then they see it, it drops 20%. What would you tell them, you know, uh, to... Yeah, have them it, you know, when you want to invest for the long term, you don't concern yourself with the, the the price swings major price swings just invest put your money away and don't look at it um one of my ex-girlfriends she bought in 2015 or 2016 or something like that i think it was 2015 the end of 2015 and she forgot about it and now she's a multimillionaire. wow that was the best uh, thing to do to forget about it in the thousand mm -hmm. 16 and just yeah because <laughs> sometimes and uh, i noticed in the last five years doing all kinds of transactions in crypto we're trying every day to outperform the market you know uh invest in different things and and sometimes 
just by doing nothing, <laughs> you are way, way ahead than if you're trying to time the market or kind of uh, invest in different speculative things. Um, and, and Bitcoin has definitely been a, 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 the case of store of value, digital gold that uh, is, you know, kind of like not even the beginning, if you compare to the internet users, the growth, right? Nobody knew that everybody is going to be using the internet back in 90s. <laughs> now everybody uses it. And I think we're going there. What do you think? In the next decade for Bitcoin, another 4 billion people coming using crypto? Yeah, the growth will be exponential um, at this point uh, because you, we're going to have corporations coming in heavy on this. And once they once they do, you'll we'll see uh, major growth. Now, we have to be careful we're out there because our financial system is smart and intelligent. They know what to do in order to keep Bitcoin down, right? So if you go to a bank and buy Bitcoin there, they'll let you, they'll sell it to you. They'll eventually get around to selling it to you and they're starting to do that. But remember, they did that with gold and silver and there's plenty of uh, uh, links out there, lawsuits out there where they would say, hey, yeah, well, we'll, we'll hold your gold and silver for you, charge you a small fee, right? And meanwhile, they never have bothered having any gold and silver. And they just say, well, that's industry standard practice. Well, what? You can't sue us for that. And they get away with that. So they're going to do that with Bitcoin. So there will be banks that just, you know, hey, I'll take your cash, right? And not buy the Bitcoin. So this will also suppress the price. Yeah. And you're thinking, well, aren't they going to lose a lot of money? Uh, you're forgetting that um, our money is just printed created right by pressing a button exactly and although yes uh banks do go under right when they run out of money they're interconnected now right so that if one goes down right the whole system goes down so I, I just, they know I, that they're going to get a bailout the, right? the federal reserve has created a digital a dollar with 1.7 million transactions per second they just publish it today. Did you hear about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, this is uh, this is news to me. So yeah, I've got to read out about that. That's awesome. Um, but uh, you know that will only end their um, reign really faster. They'll try to um, you know control what people buy with it. And once they do that, once they say, "Oh, you can't buy that with the digital dollar," that will run, make people run towards Bitcoin because hey, you know what? Bitcoin doesn't tell you what what you can buy and what you can't buy, right? So, yeah, they don't. It's not. It's not support. They're 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 going to destroy themselves. They they do they do not want to like suppress or ban stable coins, uh, but they want to live in a reality where people just use digital dollar, digital euro. So I think this is coming. And cash is going to be obsolete because the, the whole space is moving to Web 3.0 and everything digital. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's just that, you know, we have to be careful. Watch out for um, for those uh, those type of uh, currencies. Like, for example, XRP is an example of that. I mean, it's um, it looks like, oh, yeah, something great. It's something that's fast and all that, kind of, all that good stuff. But it's exactly like the Federal Reserve was. At first, right, it, it seemed like a great system, right? But, you know, it, you know, you have like these 12 member banks that's going to vote, but they all vote the same way now, right? It's the same with XRP, right? They have this federa federated uh, system where, you know, they have to vote on changes, but they're all going to vote the same way, right? They're all going to be controlled and they're all going to make changes. Mm -hmm. And also in the white paper, and we've seen examples of it they can control who whether you could send them the xrp or not and where you could send the xrp so all of that all of that is going to come into it and then they could expand the supply because they can vote to change the, the expansion of the supply uh, in the system so it's 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 all there right and people just don't see it and i understand because they don't know how to read source code they don't know how to see the bigger picture right of design Right. They only see, OK, well, faster transactions and look at all, all the people, the few banks that are signing on to it. Yeah, they're signing on to it because it, it, it's it, it gives them control. Exactly. Now, we, we've seen in the last year, uh, actually a year and a half ago, after especially Michael Saylor coming to play and uh, all of these conferences for 
corporations and the Elon Musk buying one and a half billion now published report that they're doing okay from the last year uh, purchase and um, a lot of capital flowing from institutions. You know, uh, do, do you see yourself as a, uh, a Bitcoin maximalist like Jack Dorsey and uh, uh, Michael Saylor or you see that there is uh, so much so many opportunities in the altcoins and DeFi space that, you know, we should be like looking at all of this and not just Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a maximalist, right? Um, like, you know, um, Tom Bays or some other people that I, I'm, I do have a lot of altcoins and so forth. Right. A lot of projects that I've invested in. Um, I, I'm, I, I think that the space we, we have open opportunity to innovate and we shouldn't allow say, okay, well, it should be only this way, right? We want people to innovate and be free to innovate and create different projects because who knows, maybe some other idea could come out out of, the, out of all the innovation that would be worthwhile. And so we need, we need a lot of um, different projects out there, we allow people to create different projects to see what really works. Yeah. Right now, no one's dethroned Bitcoin, right? I thought, you know, something could, could might, might dethrone Bitcoin, but so far it hasn't, um, you know, um, and there's been a lot of great projects that, that, that are, that were, um, that I thought had a, a good chance at that. And look, they're like Dash, and look at them now, right? They can't seem to get any kind of traction. They had no pump in the bull market or very little pumps in the bull market. So. Yeah, yeah. This is this, so Bitcoin has um, has has won, right? That 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 arms race basically. When we saw all the different altcoins come out, it's less risky, uh, I would say. There there are altcoins that are uh, skyrocketed. We've seen the last year, year and a half. There are others that not. You know, so you gotta every project treat differently. Uh, let's talk about Bitcoin for a second. Bitcoin has seen a tremendous growth uh, in the last year and a half uh, after the coronavirus that was the lowest point and then went on a trajectory, hit an all-time high, uh, and uh, we had a crash in the summer. Then we came back, hit another all-time high, crashed again. However, on the monthly, we did not close below uh, $35,000. So I see we are still bullish on the monthly and uh, a lot of people saying that this cycle uh, lengthening, like every cycle, every bullish cycle becomes uh, bigger and bigger. So the question is, um, what do you think, have we reached uh, the, the top in this bullish cycle? And uh, if not, you know, where, where we can go and what's kind of, what, what is your personal look at uh, where Bitcoin is going in this year and next year? Well, based on my technical analysis, right, of the situation and looking at the history of Bitcoin, has Bitcoin ever gone withdrawn, draw, has drawn down more than 50% in the bull market? Um, no, right? And not, not and continued a bull market? No, right? It's always, once it draws down more than 50%, right, um, it, it, that's a bear market, right? We've seen that. Now, anything is possible, of course. It's not it, not impossible for Bitcoin to, to just uh, continue going higher because of the Federal Reserve. They've committed to printing 25% um, more currency every year. So this means in three years that your total savings, if you have savings in dollars, will be cut in half in three years, and your uh, your income at your job will be cut in half in three years. So um, the, basically, the value of it, not the actual number, the value, right? Because of because they're inflating the, the, the currency supply. So um, as that happens, right, um, this will put light a fire under people to, to, to protect themselves and, and um, right, we can't predict what people will do, yeah. but if they do want to protect themselves, Bitcoin is the best asset for that because it has a fixed supply whilst no other asset out there has a fixed supply to protect your, your wealth, right? Um, yeah, you could say NFTs do and all that, but you know that's a risk because you're always um, you're based on subjective um, decisions. Whilst um, Bitcoin, because it's um, a fungible asset, right, and its design is objective, is to be the money, right? 
you can see huge potential growth in this asset because it will be, it will be, it will be. And once again, it will be the money. There is no stopping its trajectory. There's the, the odds of Bitcoin not becoming the money is the same as an asteroid hitting a planet. So if you want to go, no, 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 I don't want to take that risk that doesn't become money. Well, that's like taking a risk that the asteroid is going to, no, 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 you know what? I better build a bunker underground because the asteroid might hit the planet. Russia is not going to do that. Russia, <laughs> they announced, uh, Russia is a big country that they are treating the uh, uh, Bitcoin as currency and every transaction above $8,000 they're going to uh, need to be reported. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, if it's a if it's a currency, that means you can actually earn wealth in that currency, right? And be taxed as a, a, a as a, as receiving it as a currency. So they've already accepted it. So uh, as what it it's attention, the original attention. So that's a positive, actually. Okay, Katie Wood from Ark Invest. Uh, she said that Bitcoin can hit a million dollars by twenty thirty. Uh, so that's her uh, prediction, because uh, in the next decade, a lot more capital will flow. There's so much capital sitting in bonds and uh, different things that are not really producing much at all. Some bonds are even negative. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, there's actually, there was, it's measured. And the number of bonds, the value of total bonds in the negative interest rates is at $18 trillion. Crazy. We need a couple of those trillion in the crypto markets. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, there's 18 people with $18 trillion taking a, 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 taking a loss on their wealth. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, the inflation is cutting, will cut that value of that savings, those, those bonds in half by, to, by, by, by 2023. So uh, that's why I like what uh, Michael Saylor approaches. You know, when, when Bitcoin dips, you just DCA, you just buy some more Bitcoin and wait. Uh, and it goes up, you know, when the market is super greedy because it always fluctuates between extreme fear and extreme greed. We're just being in extreme fear. And I tell everybody, extreme fear is a good time to buy. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. uh, exactly. It's the, that's an easy thing to, to start DCAing whenever you... That's an, actually, you know what? That's a perfect, uh, per, perfect uh, opportunity for people who are getting into Bitcoin and they don't know where the bottom is. Well, use dollar cost averaging, but instead of like, you know, buying all the time, just start do your, your, your weekly buys when you see the, the fear and greed index drop below 50. Exactly. Okay, that's when I start my, uh, my buying, buying, buying. And when it goes above 50, that's when I stop and I wait for it to come back down below 50. Super that's simple. a great idea. Super simple and, and works. I mean, it's effective. Mm -hmm. you, if you just focus on that one little strategy where a market is fearful and just buying some more and, and, and you don't sell when you see a little fluctuation because it's the big money is not made in the few percentages here and there on a daily the big money Correct. really made when you took a long-term perspective, like seven years, for example. If, if you were a believer in Ethereum back in the days and you took a long-term perspective, that that asset has out, you know, produced a huge, huge gains. Uh, of course, we have some outliers like Shiba Inu. It's everybody trying to copy Shiba Inu now. <laughs> <laughs> It's done better than Bitcoin, but it's it's more of an outlier. And uh, I think it, right now a lot of people treat crypto as a, you know they, they want to get rich overnight. They want to invest into something and expect it to pump 10x immediately uh, upon the launch or something. They they go to different IDOs, different pre-sales, and um, you know their expectations are so high uh, that. Uh, you know, I think sometimes it can cause people to, you know, put more money than they need uh, into a speculative investment like that. Because, you know, it's not over, it's not always turns out like this, <laughs> 10x or 5x, sometimes people lose. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And so, yeah, people, I've no, no people who said, oh, I bought crypto, but why am I not a billionaire yet? And like, come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to be they rich tomorrow. Anymore. They don't have patience. They, they're like, what, it's been a week. Where, where is my 10X? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. They get, get in and get out. Uh, what do you think about uh, DeFi space? It's been right now 200 billion a total value locked. We see protocols like Avalanche over 10 billions in DeFi locked. Ethereum has not even launched their proof of stake and we already see uh, so much capital flowing into the staking. Um, do you uh, personally uh, you know, look for different DeFi opportunities? Do you, uh, do you think it's a good uh, way to diversify, to put into DeFi? Yes, I agree with. I think that uh, DeFi is, space is is still going to be growing for the the future because it well, it's basically transferring all our current financial systems, right? Where we go to buy stocks, buy uh, derivatives, and all that kind of stuff, like uh, you know, trading, uh, uh, leverage trading, and moving it to a decentralized platform, so that you can participate without giving away all your personal information. So, for example. One of the things you, you have to do at an exchange is you have to tell them where you got the money, right? And if they don't believe you, well, they're keeping it, right? So if you deposit uh, $10 million and you can't explain where you got it, if they're keeping it, mm. that's it. Mm. You can't have it, right? So this, is, this has gotten a lot of people like fearful of centralized systems. But whilst you could do the same thing, that's transfer that same $10 million into a DeFi, decentralized project, there's nobody going to ask you where you got that money. No one cares, right? And that's, just, that's the way it should be. It should, it, we should be, this, all this um, money laundering and finding out what people, what money, where their money came from is only about taxation, basically. It's not about money laundering. Because you see that when um, uh, year after year, HSBC Bank has to pay a fine for money laundering every single year. <laughs> so, 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 nobody goes to jail. Right? <laughs> you know, nobody, nobody goes to jail, you know, gets drawn and quartered or anything like that. No. If they find that's less than the amount of money they made by money laundering. So don't talk to me about how this is all about money laundering, right? Because it's not. You're not going after the big, you're not going after, you're not closing down the big banks for doing it. So don't tell me that nonsense because I see that all the time in the news. NFTs is all about money laundering. You, you cannot generalize like this. Yes, there is money laundering happening in NFTs as well but it's not the technology is not designed for that it's just like bitcoin everybody's saying it was money laundering <laughs> in the beginning yeah. uh, crime will always be with us forever right trying to um you know uh protect us from it right through um through laws is only what it only does is prevents people from actually accessing lucrative investments and and being able to you know build our society in a positive way because now uh, when you prevent someone from investing um, in the project because they have to be a, a accredited vet investor, right? Meaning that they have to have uh, a quarter, make a, uh, have a quarter of a million dollars a year or have a million dollars in the bank, that wipes out all the lower people from actually stepping up by, by getting into an asset, by studying, it, the studying it, an investment and investing at the very beginning with a small amount of money. And that's not fair. And that stops those the, the 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 poor from actually making themselves wealthy. Because now now people have uh, way less money. They they can get access to different opportunities that uh, maybe only accredited investors in the past could get access to. Exactly, exactly. And this is a beautiful thing. And so this will not this not only allows poor people to get rich. It allows people to innovate. Allows people to create something because now they can get capital right easily they don't have to to go to vcs who are, are who will take half their company or more right in order to um to, to get capital mm -hmm. they can go to mom and pop shops and people around the street to, to get capital for their idea and uh, start building something and innovating some something for their community or for the world 
what what do you think about uh, nfts uh, is it uh, something that will grow like is it like burning crash like icos because there are a lot of them are so hyped up right now <laughs> People buying boxes and play your own games for tens of thousands of dollars sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I remember when NFT space was like, you know, what, a quarter of a million dollars? The, the max was the total, total, like nothing. And I did a video saying NFTs are going to be the next big thing, right? <laughs> the only problem is, the only problem is, which one do you buy? Right. Because it's, it's going to explode beyond your imagination. And it has. <laughs> I did that video in August. So I think it was, was it 2020? Wow. That was. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, it was like, it was like pro prophetic, man. It was unbelievable. I just, I just couldn't figure out what to buy. I was like, I wish I knew which one to buy because I know this is going to be absolutely incredible. And look at that. Look, we have the crypto punks, the, the apes. Right, all uh, the, the Kongs, everything. Like, and everybody who knew great. what to buy. Collections, you know, we see new waves of entrepreneurs. They're like minting those collections, and uh, it's it's kind of it's it's a bit overwhelming. Like it, every day, something happening. So people are minting those NFTs, and uh, mm -hmm. I see it a bit of it as a pretty risky play because you never know. <laughs> <laughs> what is going to be worse and are they going to deliver on the value it's kind of like icos you know they launched this and people bought but they never delivered three years passed they never delivered on the ico the same can with nft they can say oh we do this and this and this but at the end of the day they will not do it so those nfts will not be worth that much so it's yeah exactly exactly i'm i'm actually building my own nfts collection right a small collection first right and then i'll expand on it if it's a very successful run uh it's called davitar and uh, yeah i'm i'm creating uh it's called you can go to davitar.com right um there's only gonna be 915 of them right because uh, like, a, you know, the DJ 15, right, is from the 15 comes from my birthday. It's like my birthday. Mm. And the nine is represents the month. So my my so I was born on September 15th. Right. And this is part of the reason why I have Da Vinci J 15. Right? So, so, so I have, I have nine. Is it, your NFT collection is live or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. You can have, you can uh, subscribe. Right. Uh, find out more information by heading over to dabitar.com and put in your email and then yeah, be notified exactly when uh, any news comes out. So yeah, you we're, we're building up the excitement. We're building up the hype inside the, the for, for Dabitar. And uh, once we get to a critical mass, we're going to get, we're going to start releasing, um, releasing access to whitelisting and uh, approximately, you know, uh -huh. either in a month or two, like uh, when to expect. Yeah, probably in March. March. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Now, be before we finish this, I, I want uh, to ask you about uh, somebody that is starting in a crypto. Maybe it's his first day, right? And he has a certain amount of capital, be it 20,000 or whatever, that he buys some crypto. What, what would your general thought, general idea, how would you uh, allocate uh, in a portfolio? Like what what is something that can be applicable to to a new person that is relatively safe for them to do? Well, there's there's a lot of uh, different um, assets that people can get into, but I would suggest them. But it's all based on your your wealth and stuff like that, and, and your age and all that. But I always say, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Binance Coin are the the three top three that you should own. Everything else is very speculative and you never know what's going to happen. And yeah, that was, that's what I'd recommend people do in a general sense, right? You can't say for everybody, right? Plus a younger person, right? They can throw $100 at the, you know, the next big speculation, right? And see what happens. And yeah, the, the, the higher the speculation, the lower, the lower money you want to put in. <laughs> and uh, I would say always in, in, investigate, like do due diligence and research on anything that you invest into. Because uh, exactly. otherwise you can just see it go down a little bit. Just on Bitcoin, if you don't do some learning and research on bitcoin you see it go down five ten percent and you'll be so tempted to to sell it <laughs> if, uh -huh. if you don't do the research now you know you have also your tokens right digi tokens 
Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, exactly. I have the DJ15 token that um, what I do with that is basically I, 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 I take a percentage of my revenue and I buy up and burn uh, the, the, um, the DJ15 token. So, yeah, that's that's a way to, to, to um, participate in my revenue as I increase. So it's going to be interesting because I'm going to be doing a lot of burn buying and burning over time. So, wow. Can't can't wait to see what uh, what happens. It's, this is going to sneak up on people really fast because I'm I'm building up I'm I'm building up a, a growth revenue curve, and I want the people to to latch onto that. So that's why uh, I, I built that token. So yeah, um, it's going to be a wild one. Yeah, well, I will definitely uh, dive deeper into that one. I think it supports your YouTube channel as well. Um, if you are not subscribed to Da Vinci's YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe right now. He puts a lot of valuable content there, awesome, amazing uh, analysis about Bitcoin, different news. So definitely subscribe to Da, v da Vinci J15. And uh, if you get a chance in Dubai to uh, participate in some local meetups, uh, I know you're ho hosting from time to time and you're announcing also in the YouTube. Uh, when, when and yeah, when. yeah, my YouTube channel. But I'll next when the next meetup will be uh, March the twelfth, or uh, most likely if I don't do one sooner. March the twelfth. Lock in into your calendars and definitely be here so uh, you can meet uh, Da Vinci, and uh, I'll definitely be there as well. So thank you so much, Da Vinci. I appreciate uh, all of your wisdom and and the advice and knowledge and everything that you contribute to the crypto markets and educate people about uh, Bitcoin, about crypto in general. And um, so, so much, uh, so many lives you have impacted, you know, and uh, right now, like, I think you're driven more than ever. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. When I started my YouTube channel, I just wanted to help just one person. That was my goal. I think I overachieved. <laughs> overachiever you are now now <laughs> your, your drive is to like what's your main drive right now like what's what's the thing that drives you the most right now well, my my future plans right um is to actually build um education so that central banking never comes back to humanity because it, it is so destructive and 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 um and it's horrible system right it's an enslavement system right, that people just don't understand, right, that it, if you truly understood our financial system, Ford put it best, if the American people truly understood their financial system, there'd be a revolution by tomorrow morning. Everybody will like go on the screen, no, yeah. <laughs> what the what the heck is this? I didn't subscribe to this. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're being a slave in two ways, one, through uh, your taxation, and two, through um, inflation. So you're being taxed both, you're, you're being robbed both ways by essential, by, by people at the top. And it's the worst, absolute worst thing that it's like really disheartening for me, right? That I'd never want to see it to come back because uh, it, it brings, it, 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 it destroys, degrades society, right? Society collapses because these people at the top, they're not great people. They understand the system and it's a theft system. Do you think thieves are good people? No. So obviously they're not gonna provide, uh, like make good choices for everyone. They're gonna, they're gonna control the top, the government, because they have the money, because they got it for free. And they're gonna tell them, you're gonna do it this way, right? And it's never in a positive way, positive thing. You can see it everywhere with what, you know, I mean, are we, our current problem that started in 2020, you know what, I'm not gonna say it, but you know, everybody knows what it is, right? And that's all controlled by, you know, the people at the top, right? Because they want to have more control over you. So we, we can combine together, collaborate and spread more and more. And you hope that just more millions of people will hear this message and just uh, realize the matrix they've been living in. and. Uh, kind of decide to educate themselves and educate others as well to not uh, just comply with the system the way it has been. It's always uh -huh. room for a revolution and we see it already happening in front of our eyes. So we're going to keep uh, educating um, and, and do our best to, uh, to see a brighter future. So thank you so much, Da Vinci. Another Thanks day for having me. is happening. The next decade is going to be huge. 
<laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it will be. Yes, it will be. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, thank you, Da Vinci. And uh, bye for the next video. <laughs>